At, li at last, I feel his kiss on my lips. The heat anchors me to life. I don't know if it's dragon magic or what. All I know is that it saves me. You did not do as I said. That was stupid. <laughs> yeah, I know. I see he's taken off my armor, which was freezing and wet, leaving me in my underclothes relatively dry. If I weren't so exhausted and cold, I might feel embarrassed. Right now, though, I'm just so happy we're both okay. Tarun, our supplies are gone. I don't know how we're going to keep warm. After all that, we might still freeze to death. No, we will not. I cannot take my true form here, but I'm still a dragon. His golden eyes begin to glow. Something's happening, but I'm not sure what. Oh, he looks terrifying. <laughs> Just for a moment. Just for a moment. <laughs> he takes my hand in his and guides it beneath, beneath his innermost cloak to press against his slim chest. Just under his scaly skin is what feels like a molten core blazing hot, a furnace inside him. His dragon heart? I move closer and lay against him. He adjusts it. his last dry cloaks were both wrapped up in it, sharing the fire blazing inside him. A warm little bubble, safe from the howling wind. Tarun. Yes, Rosemary. I remembered what I'd learned about Camilla. But before I can tell him, I drop like a stone into sleep. In the morning, in spite of it all, I'm refreshed. My joints are stiff and cold, but I'm ready to get them moving. Tarun stirs and brushes my hair gently out of my face. Good morning. Morning. We're still holding each other. I don't think about it, it's just a natural motion, but I lean into him and we share a kiss. Oh, we did it. We kissed the boy. It's just a small one, we barely brush each other's lips. Still, it's my first kiss. I never imagined it would be like this, but he's just so beautiful and so warm. I couldn't help but want to kiss him. Tarun stares at me, then takes my face into his hands. He kisses me again, and again increasingly urgent, increasingly fierce. Hey, hey, hey. You promised me this would be fine. <laughs> that kiss awakened some desperate need inside him, and now he can't get enough. It's nice, but... The way he's pressing his face against mine is a little hard to breathe. I don't mind exactly, but I'm a little worried. Suddenly, I feel a sharp pain in my lip as he bites down hard. O Ow! I didn't mean to cry out, but I couldn't help it. Taryn doesn't stop, not immediately. I feel his sharp teeth against my lips. Oh, Jesus Christ, he's terrifying now. After a moment, though, he seems to freeze in place. Maybe he realized what he was doing. He pulls away and stares at me with wide, scared, terrifying eyes. N no, you didn't have to stop. It's okay. I'm just... I can't f finish my sentence because, almost on cue, tears spring to my eyes. I don't mean to cry. It's just a reaction to the pain in my lip. I try to force it to stop, but that never works. <laughs> I'm not complaining, but I'd like to know. Rosemary, I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. I was just surprised. It hurts a little. I don't mind. I really don't. I liked kissing you. He stands and walks away quickly. The sudden loss of his warmth is hard to bear. With his back to me, he struggles to put his winter layers back on, which have dried in the night. His weak hands fumble and slip. Come on, here. Let me do it. I help him get dressed, but he still won't look at me. He's like, must not eat human. Yeah, seriously. Are you mad about the kiss? I'm sorry, I... Let's just go. We've already lost a night to the storm. It's calm now. We can try and find food first, or... No, we're leaving. His tone is final. There's nothing more I can say to him. <laughs> Do not eat the bay, Tyrone, probably. <laughs> we leave the cave and start the last leg of our journey. The snow's thick on the ground, but the wind's died down. I'm less worried about that, though, than I am about Tyrone's cold silence. He rushes ahead of me, turns so I can't see his face. <laughs> Twilight Boat with Dragons is way hotter. It's true. Tyrone, take it slow. We almost died last night. It's okay if you're still weak. I hired you to 
guide me. You do not need to tell me what to do. What? Where's this coming from? Come on, don't be like that. I just want to help you. Why? I didn't expect to have to explain this. Because... Because I like you. I thought you liked me too. I wouldn't mind kissing you again. That was my first kiss, you know. And yeah, it hurt when you bit me, but I don't really care. My face is burning. I can't believe I'm actually saying this out loud. When Tyrone turns to finally face me, he looks angrier than I've ever seen. No, not angry. He looks inhuman. Oh god, that terrifying face again. You are young, but you are not a stupid child. Why are you still behaving like one? How much clearer can I be about this? I am a dragon. What you like is this weak body, but it's not really me. My real mouth is not soft and gentle. If I were to bite you with it, you would not survive. My fangs were as long and sharp as your sword. I could tear you apart. I could swallow you whole. I want to. Do you understand? I want to eat you right now. I want it more than I want to breathe. If you were smart, you'd be scared of me. You'd be afraid for your life. He's hissing, low and dangerous, right in my face, but I've learned not to look away. He's like, look, bae, I'm hungry and you're food, so we need to get off this mountain or I will eat you. <laughs> All right, Kagome. Good, good. I'm not afraid. You didn't eat Camilla and you won't eat me. When I worked for those scholars, they were learning about her. The woman Camilla was based on. She was a real person, but she wasn't eaten by the dragon. She married a duke and lived to an old age. They thought the dragon was a metaphor for a political struggle, or... I am not a metaphor. But you also didn't eat her. I wanted to. I wanted to eat her so badly. I loved her, and she loved me. We were together for a time. She wanted to be with me forever, but the feelings were so intense. I loved her, but I also wanted... I wanted what I want with you right now. I couldn't trust myself, so I forced her to leave. I would have killed her if she hadn't. She cried and screamed for me as I flew away, but she went on to live her own life. I'm very happy for her. How could you do that? What's wrong with you? Weren't you listening? I saved her life. <laughs> yeah, but you cute, though. Yeah, exactly. You don't know that. You don't know what you would have done. And anyway, she knew what you were, and she still wanted to be with you. Maybe she thought the risk was worth it, or maybe she was tougher than you thought. Either way, she made her own choice. If you really loved her, you should have respected that. I bet she never forgets you. Or forgot you, just like you never forgot about her. But she had to live her whole life without you, and now she's dead, and it's too late. Ugh, it's too awful to even think about. You have a young person's idea of love. She married the Duke. I'm sure she was happy eventually. True love isn't worth risking everything for. Maybe, but that doesn't mean what she felt wasn't real. You should have honored that, and what I feel is real too. What you feel. I like you, Tarun, and after we're done this job, I want to see you again. I'm curious, do dragons fall in love with each other? Not in any way a human would recognize, and not in ways that last. When we began to meet and talk with humans, some of us began to share that feeling for the first time, though we did not know what it was. That's what I thought, so as a human, I might even understand more about love than you do. I guess it's like if I tried to date a pie. One day I would wake up to an empty pie tin, crumbs everywhere, it's true. You'd just be like, pie, go to the garbage, it'll be a better life for you, you'll have a life. I will eat you. <laughs> Please listen to me. To eat a human is to taste sweet ambrosia. It's even better if it's an exceptional person, like... Camilla, or like you. How do I know what I feel for you? It's impossible to tell if I love you or if I just want you. Whoa, whoa. I know you don't know much about language when you're talking human to human, but that is like, that was a little forward, my boy. 
I got a little blush going on. He may try to eat me, but I can handle it. Or he'd never eat me, I trust him. <laughs> I should bake a pie and not date it, but eat it. Hamster, I feel you. That sounds like a good plan. Guys, which one is it? He may try to eat me, but I can handle it. <laughs> or he'd never eat me, I trust him. I feel like she's gonna be like, yo boy, if you try to eat me, I will cut your fucking throat. Like, don't worry about it. <laughs> if he eats you, time to stab a bitch. Exactly. It's like, I love you, but if you try to eat me, I mean, I know you don't want to eat me. I mean, I know you want to, but like, I will cut you. <laughs> you don't have the stuff to make a pie. Rip the dream, hamster. But he also just, he never ate Camilla. I will buy stuff tomorrow. <laughs> Good. Like, he has some ounce of self control, but also not totally. You love pie by stream team? Awesome. Hampshire, you're gonna date a pie. Yeah, we're feisty. We're feisty and spicy. You can try to eat me if you really can't help it. But remember, I'm a knight. Knights slay dragons. If you try it, I'll have to fight back. Trust me, I won't go easy on you. I've slain plenty of beasts before. It's better for you to let me do what I want. And what I want is to be with you. That is, if you want me to. He's looking at me now like he's seeing me for the first time. He's at a loss for words. Rosemary, I... Well, actually, I guess I'm not a real knight yet, but I think my point still stands. You're as real a knight as I have ever met. He draws me cr close, cradling my face in his hands, and we kiss. I put my arms around him and pull him into me. He stiffens at first, but soon relaxes into my embrace. You can feel how strong I am, right? So don't worry, I can handle myself. <laughs> Perhaps you can. We did it. Uh, rhubarb is the best pie. Rhubarb is awesome pie. At last, we make it off of Mount Needle. Starlight City lies in view just a few miles away. We're exhausted, hungry, chilled to the bone. Yet, somehow I feel light and giddy. We conquered the mountain. It's much warmer now, but still too cold for Tarun to change form. There's so much I want to say to him, but before I get the chance, we're greeted by a stranger. Oh. Oh, it's another dragon. I see even White Heat made it down. Doing all right there, old man. Rana, don't speak to me. This whole mess is your fault. Oh, he's the one that's been eating humans. We will put a stop to it. His fault, so this is... Yes, this is the dragon who has been eating humans. Rana, you insolent whelp. You make it sound like such a bad thing, old timer. Don't you have any pride in what you are? I don't care what anyone says. It's all right to eat lesser creatures. You used to understand that, but you've withered and gone soft with age. Oh, he's just a whippersnapper. The stars cry out for us to consume all those who are beneath us. Who are we to deny them? Besides... If you don't eat humans, they just die in a few decades anyway. What a waste of good food. Say, what do we have here? Rana looks me up and down, and I tense up, grabbing the hilt of my sword. My blood runs cold, but I do my best not to show it. Shall we have a quick meal before the conference, Tyrone? There's no one here to scold us for it, after all. You can just say you lost her to the mountain. I know you want to. I can smell your hunger. You're famished. A sudden and intense heat explodes from Tyroon. His entire body shimmers and glows. Well, he's a dragon. Before I can blink, there stands before me an immense and powerful dragon, gleaming hot and bright as if the sun shines on him alone. 